But we have a Amy Alcon with us now. And, and hers is quite a story. As many of you know, she's a syndicated advice columnist, a journalist, an author, and a blogger at AdviceScottis.com. Ms. Alcom's book is I See Rude People, One Woman's Battle to Beat Some Manners into Impolite Society. It's what happened to Amy Alcom at a U.S. airport, literally at the hands of a TSA security agent on March 31st, she tells us, which is so troubling. And she blogged about it at uh, advicegoddess.com, and it's generated a tremendous amount of dialogue. To put it bluntly, and in terms Amy Alcon uses in describing the incident, she was raped by the TSA agent. Ms. Alcom named the agent publicly and now finds herself the subject of a $500,000 lawsuit for doing so. And Amy Alcom joins us on the Roy Green Show on the Chorus Radio Network. Now, Amy, you wrote on your blog, let me quote, you came through the metal detector and, quote, realized that everyone in the TSA line to my United flight was getting searched. I got teary. I was teary at the prospect of being touched by a government worker entirely without probable cause. I was very upset both because of the physical violation and because I love our now too often crumpled up Constitution and Bill of Rights. I can hold back tears, hang tough, but as I was made to assume the position on a rubber mat like a common criminal, I thought fast. And Amy, you decided not to provide your quiet compliance. Exactly. Tell us what happened. Yes. Um, so I can hold back my tears, but I didn't. I just, I let them rip, and I sobbed my guts out as this woman was searching me. And then I sobbed even louder when she did something that was so shocking. Now, I consider it to be a violation, a sexual violation, when they touch your breasts or any part of your body when you are not suspected to be a criminal. That's not how our law is supposed to work. But she stuck her hand, and I'm not sure if you're allowed to say this in Canadian radio, so I'll put it euphemistically, someplace you don't get to go unless you buy me a drink and you tell me I'm pretty. And she did this four times. And now I'm joking about this, but this was horrible. I still feel disgusted, humiliated, dirty, threatened, you know, because we have now government employees sexually assaulting people and earning a living for it daily at our airport. She went above and beyond, though, and, and I screamed, you raped me as I left the gate. And then when I blogged about it and named her name, I got a letter of demand from her lawyer. I don't know that they filed. I thought there was a process server at my door the other day. He claimed to be with the police, uh, which is a little odd. I know all the police in my precinct. They would just say it's officer so-and-so, and they wouldn't come to my door. Um, and so this woman, the letter of demand for $500,000, a written apology, and a takedown of the blog item is what I've received. You have a lawyer who stands by you. Oh, my God, he's great. On this. I have one. He's one of the top ten First Amendment lawyers in the United States. He wrote this great, great letter, you know, basically attacking the lawyer and the woman for not only violating me at the airport. I am the victim here. I was touched in a way that you are not allowed to touch me. I mean, this is horrible. Anyone else, if someone else did this to me on the street, they would be arrested. And no, I was about to say to you, if this, is, if this happened anywhere but um, at the airport, right. there would be, as you described the incident, yes. if, if, it, if you reported that to police and they did an investigation and they found that they could substantiate your accusation, there would be criminal charges laid. Right. And there's videotape of this, but I don't know how good that tape is because, again, they just, they're, they're trying to protect themselves with that tape. People are always very fond of thinking government will protect them. Government does not protect you. Government, like any bureaucracy, protects itself. And so can you see finally enough to see what she did to me? I assure you she did it because, and I can tell you, I went through New Orleans and got groped again, and I cried again. This is horrible, and I don't really understand why everybody isn't crying when their constitutional rights are just seized from them you know, as a course of normal business travel. But that woman, even though she touched my breasts and everything, she didn't down below go above and beyond. And so I cried, but I didn't scream, you rape me. I didn't scream anything at her. I was just very upset that she was in this business of violating travelers for, you know. But the first woman, knowledge. the first woman, you say, touched you four times. Four times. See, they search you. They go up your leg and then on one side, or the front of your leg, their left, right, and then they do it from the back, and they kind of touch your buttocks. It's very disgusting. And I know the searching goes on in Toronto for people coming to the U.S. because I was there in Toronto this past winter, and I got searched there. And, in fact, this guy said to me, he said, I was lucky he wasn't going to take away my dull little drugstore tweezers. 
I'm like, why? Because I might break into the cockpit and overpluck the pilot's eyebrows? I mean, this is so insane and horrible what we're going to. And we've just gotten so comfortable in America, you know, with our, you know, having all these wonderful rights that we let them be removed from us. And we just are just, we the sheeple now instead of we the people. Tell me what's happened as far as the TSA is concerned. You make these accusations very publicly on your blog. Yes. You name the individual. Uh, she's going after you possibly right. for $500,000. Oh, you haven't been served with the papers yet, but it's... The process is right. underway. Right. Has there been a reaction from t the TSA officials to anything that you've written and said? I have heard nothing from them after this, after she um, sent me this letter of demand through her lawyer. But I did actually talk to the head of TSA at LAX because I encountered her a second time as I was flying elsewhere. And this, um, the, the head of security had to come through. You know, he had to come talk to me because they were actually trying to sort of, it seemed like that the people at the gate where she is um, were trying to stop me from flying. And I was going to be the headliner of the domestic violence benefit, you know, in Colorado. And the small paper had paid for me, and they paid for my plane ticket. And they couldn't afford to, you know, theater books to have me not come. And I said, you cannot make me miss my flight. So he came out and um, talked to me then. And I, had, I told him what happened. But there was no action that I know of taken against this woman you know, and I, when I screamed that to the, I screamed to the supervisor there, you know, I was so upset I didn't stay around and complain and file a complaint because also I have to tell you from all the writing I've done, in my book I write about this in the U.S., um, where, you know, people here think that government protects you and you see these, these cases where they, t they follow, like the most, they prosecute or go after the most infinitesimal number of cases of these, you know, people who violate in the banks and all these areas. And so I know it's sort of worthless. So I didn't really bother with that. Did it ever occur to you not to react? So, so many people, and I've, I've seen emails before from people who have had unpleasant encounters with TSA agents. I spoke with an 80-plus-year-old woman from British Columbia last year, and if I remember correctly, this lady, and this had happened to her in Canada, in Calgary, she was a breast cancer survivor, if I remember the details correctly, and she was required to remove her prosthesis. No, there and I receive emails periodically from people who say I just had a really unpleasant encounter oh. with a security person at an airport, right. at an international airport. But they don't go beyond that necessarily. Did it occur to you? Did was there ever a moment where you said to yourself, maybe I shouldn't go public with this? No. And actually, um, I what I'm doing with this, people keep saying I'm so sorry because you know it's scary. I could be paying for this woman for the rest of my life. I'm in newspapers. It's not like the golden age of newspapers. I've been working a donut shop at 90 to you know, buy her a television. So that's very frightening, but we really need to speak up. I, my feeling is I do not get to have all these amazing constitutional rights and then just sit back and be quiet as they're yanked away. I have to do something we all do. And I didn't hit her or fight. I'm not very strong. I don't believe in violence. But I spoke up in the way I could by being vocal and by writing about it later on my blog, and I want to use this as an opportunity to say, look, everybody, I have a bit of a mouthpiece now because people are interested in this case. Speak up, please. I'm asking you, speak up. Don't just let your rights be violated because once you do, it's just a few short steps from that to more and more rights being eroded until we're in a police state, and then we forget how we got there. Amy, I want to stay in touch with you. Oh, I'd love that. And, and we'll, we'll follow this case with you. And we'll have you back on the show if you're willing. Oh, super. I'd and we'll that. open the phone lines and find out from our listeners if they've had, how many people have had experiences at airports that they felt very uncomfortable with. So I'd like to do that, and maybe we can do that next weekend. Oh, sure. That'd be super. I'd love okay. that. Okay. We'll stay in touch. Amy, thank you so much thank for joining us today. Much. Amy Alcon on the Roy Green Show on the Corliss Radio Network. Her blog is advicegoddess.com.